Hey, I, pr I appreciate all the interest, everybody. So this is Saturday night, and I've been out here about six hours. I did take a little bit of a break, but five or six hours, I guess, of machining time. So we're doing, doing it in two sections. Worked out good. These are the inner races, the bearing inner races. There's the outer races there. These are the original magneto-type bearings. And if you saw earlier, it was you know the bearing actually slid over a small portion of the shaft and it's crazy i mean just a tenth of a thou makes a difference and and they don't want to slide let me see if i could slide this with my fingers at all it doesn't even want to slide and i don't want to break the bearing race kate i guess what i'll do is make some little aluminum pusher pushers for these you know to help slide these things into position when i get ready to actually make it and you know, I can always polish the the shaft. At, well, I mean, we're talking about tenths, tenths of a thou. But I'm so happy the inner bore is all perfect there. The outer bore is fine. The threaded portion is great. So, you know, compared to the one I started today with my sad, sad off-center hole, I'm really, really pleased that this is a nice recovery. So I'll go ahead and publish this video tonight about how I made this thing, um, either tonight or first thing tomorrow, Sunday, and then I'll continue on. I need Actually, now that I got this far, I need to plan out my next steps, which I guess will be the pulley, and I, I need to uh, put the green Loctite on this part, you know, for the labyrinth seal. So I'll be cleaning up some of those details tomorrow and continue to make progress. So thanks again, everybody. Um, appreciate all the interest and comments. It's very kind of you, and it's fun. I mean, it's really cool that, I mean, we've got people from all over the globe that are interested in projects like this. And as I, I traded messages with somebody today that if you are going to build a corn, if you're in the U.S., the cast iron castings that you get from Gary Martin at Martin Model and Pattern are fantastic. So I would not um, hesitate for a moment to uh, order from Gary. So thanks again, everybody. Stay tuned for the next few minutes, and uh, I'll hopefully entertain you with how I made the bearing spindle in a proper fashion. Okay, after my colossal failure with the first attempt at building the spindle, I'm using the same one-inch stress-proof steel. It's beautiful stuff. It machines beautifully. I've got it in the four-jaw chuck, got it aligned, plus or minus probably half a thou. And my game plan is to machine this down to the correct outside diameter, drill halfway through or teensy bit past halfway, and then go ahead and thread. This will be the back part. Then flip it around, recenter it, and um, on the smaller portion, then turn it down to the correct diameter, put the little head on it, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, here we are with uh, machining the second attempt of the corn spindle. I've got the lathe set on, 220 RPM, got the automatic feed going as you can see, and I'm taking about 33,000, 32 to 33,000 per cut, and uh, this, this turn, this pass should bring it down to about 800,000, so basically I'm just doing one half at a time, I'm machining three inches worth of the, the spindle, and the spindle final length is four, and seven eighths, just under five inches. So a little bit more than half here. My idea is to get it down to uh, 0.5115 thou outside diameter. Make sure it's a, a correct slight push fit for the bearing and races. And then I'll drill, I'll uh, turn the back side of it, thread it, drill it, only drill it halfway through, then I can flip it around and make the front half. So I'll bring you along for those different stages. Hopefully this will work out better than the last. Thanks for the good comments, everybody. I appreciate it. Well, one thing I learned in making the failed spindle experience was the critical nature of the outside diameter. I don't know if you can see this here, but there's actually a couple of different diameters at work. This one down towards the end is not big enough. This one here that my fingernail is against is just exactly right. We're looking for a push fit on the bearings. That's what they say in the book is a slight push fit. So that's about it. Um, it's 
Uh, I've been adjusting it and I've been using, let me show you. I didn't realize I even had these because I usually use my, I'll show you both. I usually use this inexpensive set of calipers that's from Harbor Freight and they do great you know if you need just resolution to one thou but there is no tenths indicator there's no vernier extra vernier scale on this one and i looked and happily i actually have this old sterrett dial caliper that years ago i bought a whole bunch of stuff from a retiring machinist and I learned. I looked at YouTube again this morning. I know the exact right size is 0.5115 is the right dimension for the outside diameter here for the bearing fit. And so, in other words, 0.511 and a half thou. And I didn't realize that I had. I never because I never use it. A. a micrometer that has the vernier scale on it so as you can see here we go we got the let's see if I can get into focus 0.511 and then it's a shade over that and so you look at the vernier scale it's really hard to read because the lines are old and so forth okay the ones that line up are kind of right underneath the camera right now and I have to I think it's that's a two there so I probably need to come out just to hair to make it fit exactly right so I, I might ease that back out but this part's going to get turned down to 0.495 anyway so I can thread it um, but this is in my process using the vernier scale taking little cuts checking it and then checking it with the actual bearing so I'm going to proceed I'll probably back it out a couple tenths and then cut the entire shaft and we'll see how that goes okay folks for the bearing fit I couldn't get this spot on, but I got it within about a half a thou, and then uh, I've filed it, so I have it. I just took a, a measurement in tenths, and I've got it down to, it's about uh, one tenth, one or two tenths too big to be a, a slight, a, a tight, you know, sliding fit. So what I'm going to do now is finish it with sandpaper, and hopefully I'll get it down just that last little bit, but it's really neat having a a micrometer that that reads in tenths. I, I do have I confess I have to use my magnifying glass to um, my handy magnifying glass in order to read it but it's pretty cool to have that so I'll bring you back when we have the fit right. Okay so I started off with some 220 grit just to take the scratches out and then I used some 400 grit and I have the fit just about right right here. It's a little loose a little further on the shaft so I, I may actually put a little light knurling on there and bearings that get to stay in place forever, you can put Loctite on them to hold them. But these bearings are su supposed to be um, be able to slide along the shaft. That's why they want the sliding fit, I believe. So anyway, that's as close as it's going to get. And I'm fairly happy with that so far. So we'll continue on. We need to face this edge. And uh, we'll uh, thread the back portion of it and drill through halfway. Okay, so I turned this part down, this uh, 690, or 625 thousandths length here, 5 eighths cents of an inch. Turned it down to um, 0.495, just under a half inch. I put a little um, gully in there, and I've already taken, I've, I've got my threading tool in the here, and I've got my 20 TPI gauge, check it, and it's looking perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the Cut the threads. All right, set it at zero. Put it in another five thou or so to cut. Put a little cutting fluid on here. I just take my time when I'm cutting threads. No sense getting in a rush. Make sure I've got everything set up just like I want it. All right, let's see. About coming around to my mark on the thread dial. Set my 
cut in, take the dowel and the angle there, and I'll just keep cutting and I'll bring you back when it's finished. I just thought I'd show a test fit. I got it pretty close after a couple more passes, and the nut will just start to thread on there. So it tells me I need to take the passes in five thou increments now, and we'll see how we how we go. Let me go ahead and I'll get it set up again. Maybe I can take it out. I haven't taken them. I'm no threading pro, but all right, I've got I've already got my cross slide set to zero. I'll put a five thou in on the angle, put a little cutting fluid on it. Wait till we get close. probably going to do it. It sure looks like it. Disengage, back it out, turn, go back to zero just in case I have to take off more. I always like to bring it back to zero so I know I'm at my zero point. This sounds kind of silly. deburring thing is. Let's just see how that fits. Yep, look at that. That was just the difference between a 5 thou cut on the compound and not. So it's less than 5 thou. It gives a, a perfect fit for the, for the nut. Alright, looking good. Now we'll go on to uh, drilling and as I said before I'll just be drilling halfway through and we'll see how that goes bring you back for that sorry okay and in, in order to avoid the problem that I had with the off-center drill the book talks about a way to do that and I guess I just thought I was smarter than the book but I'm not so my idea now I'm going to center drill the back end of the spindle here and then I'm going to use successively larger drills to go up to a letter N size drill, which is less than 5 sixteenths. And then I can use my, I've got 5 sixteenths inch reamers and oversized reamers, you know, one that's a thou over than that. I can use the reamers to fill it to uh, finish out the final inside diameter. So that's the plan. So here I am center drilling. I just get a nice center drill spot on here. start out with, I'll make, you know, three or four smaller drills. Letter N is not that big, uh, 300 thou or so, just under it. I forget exactly what it is. But, so I'll take three or four drill passes and just go up halfway, and then I'll meet in the middle on the other side. Okay, I made it a couple of initial cuts used a letter C and a letter I, I decided since I was going up to letter N, I might as well use the letter, letter drills because I don't uh, often use them, not nearly as much as the others. You can't see it, but I put a little blue mark on there at the two and a, <coughs> excuse me, the two and a half inch mark. So I'm just that's as far as I'm going in with the drills. And the letter N drill, according to my chart, is .302 diameter. So it's slightly under 5 sixteenths, about 12 and a half thou under 5 sixteenths. So that'll be nice to clean it up. It should be, if I go in both sides at this dimension, then it uh, should be able to clean it up perfectly with a reamer. And the nice thing is I'm sure I'm not getting any deflection. So the center hole should be very, very close to on center. And if it's not, you know, the critical factor is going to be the 40 degree taper anyway. I mean, if, so if it's just even close, it should be fine. All right, so that's it. That concludes this side. If you're wondering my process, I mean, my next step is going to be take this out, reverse it, put it in the four jaw here, and grip it with this. That's why I wasn't extremely, I wanted to get it really close to the right fit here. I'm a little bummed that it's smaller. I was kind of hoping it would be just a teeny bit over um, so that I could sand it down 
uh, to the final finish, the push fit on the bearings, because what it's going to be, there's going to be, I'm, I'm going to have to mill a little slot right here, a 332nd inch wide slot by 47 thou deep, something like that, right along in here for a keyway for the pulley. And then the actual bearing run it, for the backside will be like in this area here, something like that. So that should be a good fit on the on the pulley, excuse me, on the bearing. And then the upper bearing is gonna be, basically it's, it's material that I haven't really turned yet, the, the uh, upper pulley area. So hopefully that makes sense, but I'll take it out and do the other side now. Well, this is the main reason that I didn't wanna, that I tried to machine the initial thing in one pass initially because um, I didn't want to have to reverse and recenter this, but I've I've gone through and centered it as carefully as possibly as possible, and then I ran it, and you can see the needle barely deflux at all. So I think I've got it perfectly centered on the shaft, the turn shaft that's the bearing fit. So now I'll just I'm going to take very light cuts because I don't want to to disturb this at all. But I'll I'll turn this down to the it's like 0.689 outside diameter, something that fits the inside of those um, two-piece labyrinth shells. And then I'll turn the rest of it down to the 0.5115 and then we'll drill out. Okay, so after centering, as I showed in the last segment, I very, very carefully turned this down because I didn't want to deflect the shaft. So I turned this down to the fit on the labyrinth seal as you can see, it just barely fits on there. So there's just a, a maybe a half a thou of room for Loctite, a thou or half thou room for Loctite. So that fits on there good. What I needed to do before I um, finished turning the smaller part of the shaft is the, 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 uh, the shoulder here was my registration point, my uh, three inch mark. So I needed to drill this out to a letter N drill so that I can run a reamer all the way through and then I can cut this off at the exact right length. I can move over an inch and uh, seven eighths from the three inch shoulder and do my cutoff and then I'll have the proper length. Then all I have to do is mark the half inch little shoulder for the, um, here I can demonstrate that, like on my failed attempt, there'll be a little half inch shoulder where that labyrinth cap goes on. So those are the next steps. Let me, uh, if you want to watch, everybody loves the action, but drilling in a lathe is pretty boring. But well, let me go ahead and do that for you. While I've got the camera running, so I'm locking the tailstock. Got it on 70 RPM. Let me put a little cutting fluid on the drill. This is, again, this is the letter N drill, which is 0.302 diameter. Take it nice and easy. As you can see, I'm just... Like I said, I didn't want to do anything that could weaken the shaft, you know, deflect it at all. I know that the jaws are going to put some marks on the shaft there, but that's okay because the bearings have to slide there. So I need to, it, it's not going to hurt to have a little raised spot, I think. <laughs> that's my theory anyway. Pull it out, clear the drill off. But I know I've already gotten it all the way through because I used a step drill that I used a letter C and then a letter I drill. Same series that I did on the other side as well. So I'm cranking it out. You can see I'm engaging. I'm getting all the way to the center. Can do, that's the extent, maximum extent of my uh, tailstock throw. It's even as big as this lathe is. That's kind of one of the frustrating things that the, the tailstock drilling part can only go out four inches. So I'm going to unlock that, slide it in, just to make sure that we have this all the way through. There we go. Now I'm sure I'm all the way through with the letter in on both sides. So everything's cool there. We should be all set. Yeah backed it out so I'll just ream that out and then we can cut it off. Here I am cutting off the excess length off the shaft. As you can see I'm supporting it with a rotating tail stop. Okay I cut off the piece you can see it down there and then I moved I deburred the end and moved the tail stock up into place and 
mark the cutoff tool for a half inch shoulder of the Z on the Z axis. So I'm just making a line there. I'm not going to go in too far, but again, just to prevent from deflection, I put the rotating tail stuck in there. And at least I've got a target line for my half inch. So now I can put the opposite kind of turning tool in and turn that down to the bearing shaft diameter as well. Turning the shaft down to the bearing diameter, supporting it with the rotating test, <laughs> excuse me, tail stock. Just have a little bit more to go, as you can see, about probably 100 hours. So. And as you probably can notice, I'm just going to be stuck. I won't be able to put the. Um, turn this off for a second. I won't be able to put the mic, the uh, actual bearing on there. I'll just have to use my micrometer. So I'm glad I've got the micrometer that reads in uh, tens of thousands. Okay, obviously I can't check with the bearing, but I just mic this with my tenths micrometer, and I got 0.5117. So I'm probably about two tenths higher than I need to be here. I'm just that's perfect for me in this situation because what I'd like to do. I will just finish this. I'll clean up this little nub I couldn't get to, and then I can I can always use a little bit of emery paper to get it down to the exact right fit, if necessary. Okay, this is exciting. Um, using this uh, carbide right hand tool, I guess, or left hand tool, I guess it is. Cleaned up the shaft all the way down to the half inch end, and I've cut it to. Let's see if we can do this so you can read it. So it's 0.5. One, you see the the ten there, then the eleven. And it's like it looks like it's halfway in between, but I learned how to read these today. The tenths micrometer, it's I think it's 0.7. I don't know if the seven's even going to show up on the camera, but I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to do this one-handed, and uh, it's really faint, but you. You can see the three, four, five on the left, the letters there, the numbers, I mean, and it's the seven. There we go. See that line? Hopefully, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm about two tenths thicker than I need to be here, which for me is perfectly fine. I can, I'll move that down. Actually, I'll sand it a little bit tonight, use a little bit of emery cloth just to clean that up. Um, and then I'll be able to take it out and I'm sure the bearing won't exactly slip on there just like it is but it shouldn't take but a little bit of polishing to make it go on just perfectly. Okay the last thing I'm going to do on the spindle tonight before I take it out of the forge jaw and see how good the results came. I've got the the uh, 5 16 inch reamer. It's a one thou oversized 5 16 inch reamer chucked up in the tail stock and I put some tap paste lubricant on it and I'm getting ready. I've got it set at 70 RPM, which is the speed that I use for drilling. So, there we go. And I'm not going to video this whole thing. I can feel it going in pretty well. It's getting a little bit of resistance, which is fine. It's to be expected because it's cutting out some. You know, all I'd, I'd used an end, a letter N drill for the pilot. So, let's pull it out. And I'll clean it off and then over here so you can see some material there. It's actually it's cutting, which is a good thing. So I'll clean this off, I'll lather, rinse, repeat, and go through the whole five inches. I chucked it up so that five inches is sticking out. 